How's it going everyone? Wanna talk about this news that I'm sure to a lot of PlayStation fans is gonna go a little bit under the radar, but I feel it's fascinating and it really speaks to the direction that PlayStation is taking while well, their business into the future in terms of releasing their games on PC as well. If you guys are unaware, Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut is the latest major PlayStation title that will be coming to PC. Uh, it is dropping on May the 16th, right around the corner, and Ghost of Tsushima, I would say, is one of those games that the PC audience has been clamoring for, even more so than games like Horizon, Uncharted, Last of Us. If you see the rhetoric attached to Ghost of Tsushima, and prior to this game getting announced for PC, once these PlayStation on PC titles started coming out, Ghost of Tsushima was absolutely one of the most requested titles. It's really that and Bloodborne, those are the two major titles, and... What I find fascinating with the release of Ghost of Tsushima is that Sony is taking their PlayStation support one step forward and they are trying to more so integrate PlayStation more than ever into one of their games. Now, Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut will feature the base game, the Iki Island expansion, as well as Ghost of Tsushima Legends. It is being done by Nixus Software, a studio that Sony acquired a few years ago to really help them with porting these PC games because when Horizon Zero Dawn was initially ported to PC. That port was absolutely god-awful. Nixus has been tasked to do a lot of these ports, including Spider-Man, uh, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, as well as most recently, Horizon Forbidden West. And guess what? Horizon Forbidden West, one of the greatest PC ports ever released. It was tremendous. And now they are once again tasked to do Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut. And with this, a lot of new features that are linking PlayStation and PC more so than ever. Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut is the first PlayStation title on PC that uses a new PlayStation overlay, which includes your friends list, trophies, settings, and your profile. And on top of that, Ghost of Tsushima is going to have full trophy support for your PlayStation Network account on PC. Uh, that does not remove uh, Steam achievements, and for the two people that buy the game on the Epic Game Store, you can get achievements on there as well. This is just in addition, but you can see that barrier and the wall between PlayStation and PC that is being lowered and lowered, and if you told me 10 years ago that this would have ever happened as far as PlayStation releasing their games on PC, I would have said you are absolutely foolish. And before we talk more about this, I know that some of you guys are the hardcore of the hardcore when it comes to PlayStation fandom, and I really recommend that while on this channel, we do focus on PlayStation, we cover PlayStation, and sometimes I'll crap on PlayStation, and I get more pushback, I feel like, than a lot of other channels, and people are like, bro, you're always being negative, you're always crapping on PlayStation, so on and so forth. Bro, if you guys don't realize, with all the content that I upload on this channel, I... I'm not saying I make PlayStation a lot of money, but talk to some people that watch our PlayStation deals videos, and they'll say... And I get these comments all the time that I help them make a lot of purchases on the PlayStation Store based on the sales they were running. We indirectly have put money into PlayStation's pocket. I have bought every single PlayStation console uh, that has ever been released, including all the handhelds, and I bought the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5 day one. I still remember that day 10 years ago when I bought the PS4 and 10 McChickens uh, from McDonald's. $1 McChickens back in the day. You can't get that anymore, but nevertheless, I've been a PlayStation fan all my life, but I'm critical when it needs to be critical, but I get it that some of you guys that are the hardcore of the hardcore, you're like, bro, why are they releasing our exclusives on another platform? Bro, these games are supposed to be PlayStation exclusive. Even if these games are a delayed release on PC, you guys see it as them taking content away from you or exclusivity away from you. What is exclusivity, guys? What benefit does exclusivity offer you if you are a PlayStation 5 owner? Nothing! It offers you nothing! Exclusivity is a benefit to the publisher, to PlayStation, it is something that attracts people over to get them to buy a PlayStation 5. Unless you want to talk about, oh, if they release exclusives, more people will buy a PlayStation 5, Sony will make more money, and then they can create more exclusives. I guess if you want to wrap your brain around in some way like that, I guess you could think about it that way, but I'll counter that argument. Guys, why did PlayStation decide to go down the live service rabbit hole? Do you ever think about that? Why did they go down that live service route? 
Because at the end of the day, when you talk about these first party games, these big budget titles, your Last of Us's, your Ghost of Tsushima's, your Horizons, as first party PlayStation titles, no matter how good these games are, if they remain exclusive, there is a ceiling, a definitive ceiling that they will never break in terms of how much money these games can generate. And you want to know why they can't break that ceiling? Because no matter how good a game is, at some point you are going to hit a wall as far as how many PlayStation 5s you can sell. There are only so many gamers out there that are going to buy a PlayStation 5, even if the games on the PS5 are some of the best ever. And they have been some of the best ever. You look at God of War, you look at Horizon, you look at Spider-Man. These are some fantastic, fantastic games. But at the end of the day, you're going to sell your millions and millions of copies of those games. Some games are going to outperform others, but there is going to be a ceiling. And guess what? These games are getting more and more expensive to make so they gotta make a bigger return on the investment now i don't think the best strategy is to go the live service route and i get it that chasing that gravy train is incredibly attractive but what does releasing their games on pc do it opens a new revenue stream it offers a new avenue for them to make a return on the investment on the games that they've created sure ghost of tsushima horizon forbidden west Nexus has got to do some work to get these games out on PC so they can be sold again, but it's not nearly the level of work of creating a big budget AAA game from the ground up. So if releasing these big budget uh, PlayStation titles on PC is going to give them an additional revenue stream, it's going to offer them an additional uh, return on their investment. Thus, they are making more money on these big budget single player first party games. That is going to incentivize them to create more big budget first party games because you will get the influx of people that are going to buy the game on PlayStation 5 and then you will get additional revenue from when you release the game on PC. Such is the cycle of life and the cycle of game release. They can make money, more money off of these games and I want them to make more money off the first party games that they are doing and what they are known for. I want them to make more money on God of War Ragnarok. I want them to make more money on Horizon Forbidden West because those are the games that I love and if releasing these games on PC whether it be a delayed release whether it be a day one release because I don't think a day one release would hurt PlayStation sales all that much I think the audience that likes PlayStation and wants a PlayStation console they're gonna go the PlayStation route the PC audience that wants a PC and they want to play on their gaming PC they're gonna buy a gaming PC and the crossover while it's there it's not as overblown as people think it is and especially with Xbox kind of slowly getting out of the console competition market. I mean, they're still definitely there, but I think the necessity for Sony to acquire these timed exclusivity deals, um, you know, that goes out the window, and I think the necessity is still there um, to an extent for them to have exclusive, but we see that they are creating new avenues to release their games, especially when it comes to live service titles. There is no way in the hell you want to drop these live service games only on PlayStation. Live service is a platform on its own. Helldivers 2, for example, is almost a platform on its own where you get people to buy that game for $40. You want as many people to buy that game as humanly possible because then you can monetize them on the back end. So those live service games, at the end of the day, they're always going to be cross-platform. But if we can incentivize Sony to release more first-party games by having these games get released on PC so there's additional revenue coming on the back end of creating these big budget titles, you know, 150, 200 million dollars, you gotta make a profit. Gaming is a business at the end of the day, and if they're gonna keep continuing to push the envelope and releasing these games on PC, it's going to be incredibly beneficial for them in the long run of creating more and more high-quality first-party games because that ceiling, guys, it's there. There's two things Things that you can do to break that ceiling. Either you raise the base price of that game or you could go in the route of monetizing those games extended beyond the initial release with things like microtransactions, DLC content, and you know, there's different routes you could go and sometimes it works. Manage greed, I'm all for it. But what about just creating another avenue where a new audience can play these games? I'm not crazy about exclusives. I get it why it needs to exist in the console market, but really exclusives offer no benefit uh, to the consumer outside of getting into some spat online where we want to compare, you know, my console's got 43 AAA games, your console's got 22 AAA games, Xbox is getting cropped on by PlayStation. I mean, it's nice for the dialogue on social media, but at the end of the day, your user experience doesn't change whatsoever if these games are released on PC. In fact, in the case of Ghost of Tsushima Legends, 
it's going to have cross-platform play, so your boys that are playing on PC and you're on PlayStation 5, now you can play with them on Ghost of Tsushima Legends, so your experience is getting enhanced. Helldivers 2, your experience is getting enhanced with cross-platform, although with Helldivers 2, let's be real, cross-platform play has had some issues, but you get the idea. The idea is for your user experience to get enhanced, and if PlayStation can make more money on your Ghost of Tsushima's, on your Horizons, and it's gonna open the avenue for them to do more games like that and less games that are going to be live service, there is a marketplace for both, but if we want the level of first party titles to continue to be released, I want Sony to be rewarded for their work. I want Sony to figure out ways to continue making money off their big titles without them going, you know, the full on crazy monetization route, $130 gold edition route that Ubisoft is going. And I get it, at some point they might go that route and you can even make the argument, hey, they're releasing Ratchet Rift Apart two years after its initial release for $60. And, you know, that price point's a little bit wild, but in an alternative world, those games weren't even on PC. At least now you have the option to buy them right away, or you can wait for them to go on sale. And Ghost of Tsushima is going to be $60 for a four-year-old game. Okay, you can push back on that. But you do get the Iki Island expansion, whatever. I'm not here to argue price points with you, but if this is a compelling way for PlayStation to continue making money on their first party games that you guys, you guys want more of this style of first party games, let them go the route of making a little bit of additional revenue off releasing these games on PC. It's a win-win for everybody involved. More people get to play these games. Sony's incentivized because now if they release their single player games, Yes, there's still a ceiling that they're gonna hit, but that ceiling has been raised because they're releasing these games on PC. It's gonna be a gigantic W across the board, and it's going to increase the overall appeal of PlayStation IPs. I guarantee you, once Stellar Blade comes to PC, been saying this over and over again, that game's gonna crush it on PC. Once Ghost of Tsushima comes out, game's gonna crush it on PC. Spider-Man 2's gonna do well on PC. God of War Ragnarok's gonna do well on PC, and I don't know if they're ultimately gonna eventually go day one games on PC, Obviously, the live service games, your Helldivers 2s, those are going to be day one. The other titles, I don't know. I don't even think it would be that big of a deal if the games came out day one on PC, but I get, I get the argument of why they don't want to do that. They still want to get people on PlayStation, but I just think they have the PlayStation audience won over. But also, from a Sony standpoint, getting more people on PlayStation, so lucrative for them because ultimately the idea is then you can sell them PS Plus subscriptions, then you can sell them more games that you're going to make money on the back end off of. And once they get people in that ecosystem, that becomes way more valuable than, let's say, selling another copy of Ghost of Tsushima on PC. It's a balancing act. It certainly is a balancing act, but... I think it's good for everybody involved, and I think this paints a pretty big picture that Sony is invested into the PC market. And guys, if you're the hardcore of the hardcore PlayStation fans, don't be upset about this. There's no reason to be upset about it. You're getting Xbox games on your PlayStation here shortly. Hi-Fi Rush on PlayStation, uh, Sea of Thieves, Grounded. PC players are getting PlayStation games. I would like everything to be on every platform because that ultimately benefits the consumer in terms of playing some great games. But that's going to do it for me. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Sound off there. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.